Osteen. The John Osteen program is closed captioned for the hearing impaired. In this hurting world, we all need answers. Though the world is constantly changing, God's wisdom is the constant solution. I'm John Osteen, pastor of Lakewood Church in Houston, Texas. We're a family church made up of people of all denominations, races, and walks of life. We've dedicated our lives to bringing the compassion of Jesus Christ into every person's world. And after many years, we've developed a reputation for helping those who have been overcome to be overcomers. Your dreams and desires are important to God and to us. We're interested in you, not in what you can do for us. We want God's best for you. Join with me today and discover how God's Word can bring the miracle you need. For over 54 years, John Osteen has touched the lives of individuals around the world. Founder and pastor of Lakewood Church, an international training center, teaching people to use God's Word to overcome life's everyday challenges. A local church with a worldwide vision, Lakewood is dedicated to helping hurting people in America and in over 100 nations of the world. Don't miss the next 30 minutes with Pastor John and Dodie Osteen at the Oasis of Love, a place where miracles happen and lives are changed. We welcome you today in the name of Jesus, that name that is above every name. Amen. And we got a letter this week that touched my heart and touched my husband's heart so much that we want to share it with you. It's from a man who's in jail. He's in maximum security. And he said, everybody on this floor is not a violent person. But he said, God's blessed me. And there are a lot of Christians here on maximum security. But now listen to what he says. Pastor, we watch you on Sundays. We watch you anytime we can. It's made a difference in my life. I thank God for men like you that take time for people who are locked away. It makes me feel special and wanted when every time you come on the air, you tell us that you know us and you welcome us, that we are watching from you from jail or prison. But John, when you go over to that big crane and just say you that are in prison and all, you don't know how that touches the hearts of people. And uh, you know, people that we would never know about if we didn't hear letters like this. But I'm so glad, and I say to you myself, and for the people of the Oasis of Love, we're glad that you uh, watch us from prison, from jail, wherever you are, and we believe that you're gonna get help and saved, and then when you get out, you'll come and visit us someday and say, I got saved, and here I am at Lakewood Church, the Oasis amen. of Love. Amen, give nobody a name, amen, amen. Well, we do want to say, first of all, because of that letter, we are so glad the prisoners do watch us, and uh, I'm glad that you're getting blessed and getting saved, giving your heart to Jesus. We're glad for the shut-ins. We're glad for the hearing impaired and all you people around the world. We just simply want to tell you how you can have heaven here and heaven hereafter. Could I have an amen? amen. Let's hold up our Bibles and make our confession. Let's say it out loud. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same. Shout it out. Never, never, never. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. In the book of Acts chapter 27, I will remind you of our theme uh, scripture that we use there for this series of messages on four anchors for the storms of life. Paul was in that great storm there. The Bible says it was midnight, all hope was gone, and they were drifting and being blown about in that ship. And then it says, fearing lest we be cast upon the rocks and shipwrecked, the Bible says they cast out four anchors and wished for the day, and everybody was saved. So we're talking about the anchors of life. I want to read you a scripture for our text today. This is 2 Timothy 3, 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable 
for doctrine or teaching, for reproof, for a correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the person who serves God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. You know, we have in our society cut our anchors. We have cut anchors of all the things that really have made our nation great. And I realize that I'm speaking to many nations. I don't know all that's happening in your nation, but I know what's happening here. And we've cut our anchors. We have said no to normal family life. We have said no to the Bible. We have said no to morality. We have said no to churches. We've cut our anchors, and as a result, our society is drifting on the sea of life, being blown by the howling storms and winds about us. We cut loose. You know, today, anything goes. Beat your wife. Abuse your wife sexually assault your children, curse, blaspheme the name of God, fight the church, laugh at Jesus, kick the Bible out of the school, stop praying, get rid of the Ten Commandments. I'll tell you, we have sown to the wind and we've reaped the whirlwind. Today, we have a society that is violent. Today we have a society that is fierce, that has no regard for the things of God. Children don't know what's right and wrong. They shoot their parents. They shoot each other. Nothing for people to just sleep together whether they're married or not. After all, what's right, what's wrong? The Bible says there was a time when every man did a, everything that was right in his own eyes. Just because it's right in my eyes or your eyes doesn't mean it's right in God's eyes. The moral fiber of our nation and many other nations is being eaten away. And I'm talking about four anchors we need to cast out of our ship to hold us steady. Today, I'm talking about casting out the anchor of the Word of God, the Bible. You know, our nation was built upon the Bible. Bible-believing men and women came here to establish a nation. The founders believed in God and believed in the Holy Scriptures. Even in our capital, we have references to the Bible and the Ten Commandments. And we need to return to the Word of God. Amen. You know, the Bible says in the, in the Old Testament that, that God's people were just running rampant. Everything was right, wrong. Everything was degraded. And God's judgment was upon them. And then Josiah came to reign. He decided to clean out the temple. They had lost sight of God. They had lost the Bible. Nobody knew what was right and wrong. So while they were cleaning out the temple, some of the men found the Bible. And they came to Josiah and said, look at this book. We found this book. And Josiah sat down and read it. He was 26 years old. And when he read it, he was astonished. He began to weep. He began to cry. He said, oh, God, no wonder your judgment is upon us. No wonder we're having such storms of life. No wonder everything is going wrong. Here is what you demand of us, and we have strayed from this book. Thank God they found the Bible. Yeah. And what we need to do is throw out all the debris of our life, whether it's in the church or out of the church, and find the Word of God. Find what the Bible says. The Bible says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That's what we need, that light. The Bible says, The entrance of thy words gives light. The Bible says, All flesh is as grass, it withers and passes away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Now notice what this scripture says. All scripture is God-breathed. 
God breathed this Bible. It came from the inside of God. You say, well, we have our own Bible. This is the only Bible that's going to stand. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. Everybody shout profitable. profitable. See, it's profitable. This book is profitable. For what? It's good for teaching. We need to be taught what's right and what's wrong. It's good for reproof. Somebody needs to reprove. It's good for correction and for instruction and in righteousness. Right kind of living. You see, the Bible is the revelation of God to the human race. Everybody say, revelation of God. See, in the, we, we've thrown the Bible out many times, even in churches. People refer to the Bible, but they don't teach it. It doesn't matter whether you believe it or not, the Word of God is right and true. And the Bible reveals to you God and His great love. The Bible reveals to you your enemy, the devil and demons. The Bible reveals to you that after death, there's either hell or heaven. The Bible reveals to you that it's good in God's eyes to live morally right. That we are not to blaspheme the name of Jesus, blaspheme the name of God, talk filthy out of our mouth, lie down in bed with just anybody, be faith, uh, unfaithful to our wife or our husband. The Bible holds the standard. And the revelation of God comes to us as how we can live a life that's good and strong. But today, in America, we're getting away from the Word of God. Thank God we're not going to get away from it in Lakewood Church. Thank God we're not going to get away from it on television. We're going to preach the Word of God until you know that God loves you and can save you. Now, let me just read you some passages of Scripture. You know, we talk about what's right and what's wrong. Here's the book. God wrote it. Now listen to what it says. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. Now the righteousness of God is revealed. The mercy of God is revealed. But that's not all that's revealed. The wrath of God. I'm telling you, people can bring the wrath of God upon them. Notice why he says that. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness, and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because when they, that which may be known of God, is manifest in them, God has showed it to them. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image like unto corruptible man and birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Now notice what this says. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness, to the lust of their own heart, to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who changed the truth of God, changed the truth of God into a lie. Hear me, church. Today, the truth of God has been changed into a lie in many places in our society changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator. For this cause God gave them up under, under vile affections. Think about it today. Vile affections. For even the, even the women did change the natural into that which is against nature. Where do we hear about this? Only in the Bible. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error, which was, which was meat. See this, the Bible rebukes, reproves, corrects, shows the way. Why does God say this? He doesn't want you to go to hell. Being filled, now listen to this, with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, 
full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, not only do those things, but have pleasure in those that do them. My, how we need to return to the Word of God. I want to read you a scripture over here in 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 3. I want you to hear what God says about the last days. This also know that in the last days perilous times shall come. And they're on us right now. For men or people shall be lovers of their own selves. Me, my poor, I want my way. Lovers of their own selves. Covetous. Do anything for a dollar. Let your family go to hell, but make that money. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. Truth makers, false accusers, no self-control, fierce, and notice this, despisers of those who are good. Oh, nothing makes this world any matter than when good people try to help. Despisers of those who are good. So where are you getting this? I'm getting it out of the Word of God. I read it so you can know there's a standard. There's an anchor. You say, well, I, I'll do what I want to do. God says this is the way. Turn away from things like this. Notice here. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. But here's the astounding thing. Having a form of godliness but denying the power. See, these people God's talking about are religious people. Oh, I go to church. I love Jesus. I'm, I'm saved. I'm this. I'm that. Let me tell you something. By their fruits you'll know them. Not everybody, Jesus said, not everybody who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father. Yes. You can't live contrary to the Bible and go to heaven. Amen. You've got to be changed by the power of God. Yes. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power. Yes. What is that power? Power to change you. Power to drive the devil out of you. Power to get rid of those unclean demons. Power to get rid of those habits that you've got. You see, they, they have a form, but they deny the power. Thank God for the power. I said, thank God for the power. Thank God for the power. Notice what it says in chapter 4. I charge you therefore before God, and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the living and the dead at his appearing. Listen, look up here. You can say what you want to say about Jesus. You can deny him. You can, you can uh, ignore him. But I'll tell you, the Word of God says that Jesus will judge the living and the dead. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. What does it mean? He said, if I go to that cross, and I am, if I die for the sins of the world, and I will, if I taste death for every man, and I am, if I rise from, that de from the dead and come back to life, and he did, he said, I'll draw all men unto me. What does it mean? Every man and woman will be drawn to him and give an account of what you've done with his death, burial, and resurrection. Amen. Everyone, with every tick of the clock, with every heartbeat, you are getting closer to the time when you will stand before the Lord Jesus Christ. Why don't you make him your Lord today and your Savior today? I charge you, he said to Timothy, because Paul's getting ready to die and go out into eternity. He said, I charge you, Timothy, before the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the living and the dead. In other words, he said, Jesus is standing right here. The Father's standing here. They hear what I say. You're living in a bad generation. I charge you, Timothy. What does he tell him to do? Give a book review? 
I charge you in the presence of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Preach the word. Preach the word. That's the only thing that'll cleanse people. That's the only thing that'll set people free. Preach the word. Be instant, in season, and out of season. Now notice what he says. Reprove, rebuke with all long suffering and doctrine. And he looks way down into our day and he says the time will come when they'll not endure sound teaching but shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, teaching their own pet doctrines and, and believing they're right. We need to cast out the anchor of the Word of God. Put it in your home, men. Read it. Teach your children what's right and what's wrong. Today we don't know anything about the Ten Commandments. God spoke those Ten Commandments. It was so powerful that the earth shook and fire came out. When God said, you shall have no other gods before you. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Those commandments came from the mouth of God. And they're still the moral creed for humanity today. We need to teach them Meditate on the Word of God. Do the Word of God. I want to read you a comforting scripture, an astounding scripture from 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Verse 9, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of, them, of themselves with mankind, nor Thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. But I like this next scripture. And such were some of you. I listen. And such were some of you, but... Everybody shout, but three times. But, but, but. It doesn't matter where you came from, how bad you are, but... He said, but now, because you've heard the gospel, now, because you've heard the word of God, now, because you've listened and obeyed, but now, are you washed? You're sanctified. You're justified. Doesn't matter how bad you've been. The gospel and the good news is this. No matter how stained you are with sin, you can be washed clean in the blood of Jesus. No matter how guilty you are, justified means declared not guilty. Your record is cleared. You can be justified. Sanctified, that is, God takes you, washes you, declares you not guilty, and sets you aside to use as a vessel of honor. So the good news is that no matter how you've lived, there's help for you. He said, Brother Osteen, my, seemed to be a hard message today. The Word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. The Word of God is God-breathed. It's got God's life in it. It's the devil that wants you to live wrong and think you're going to heaven. All these sins, you need to repent and turn away from them. You need to open up your heart to God. But notice, no matter how bad you are, no matter how stained you are with sin, the blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse you and wash you from all sin. God will push the button and clear your record. And not one sin will be held against you. And then he'll set you aside to be used for his service as a witness for him. Oh, how glad I am to come through that camera and tell you that we have a great God. Yes, the storms of life are blowing. Yes, there's trouble on every side, but cast out anchors. And one of the anchors you need is the word of the living God. But that word tells me that God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son that if you would believe in Jesus, you would not perish and die and go to hell, but you would have everlasting life. While the congregation joins hands and they're quiet, I'm gonna lead you in prayer. See, I didn't know how to pray. I want you to pray this prayer after me. Say, oh God, I know I'm a sinner. Oh God, I know without Jesus I'm lost. God, I want to be saved. I want peace in my heart. 
Today I know that I'm in the world and I'm on my way to hell, but I want to be saved. Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you died for me and rose again. I believe you're the only Savior, the only way to heaven. So, Jesus, I open wide the doors of my heart. Come in, Jesus, and be my Savior. I believe in my heart. God raised you from the dead, and I say with my mouth, Jesus is now my Lord. Thank God you prayed that prayer. I want you to write me. Not a letter. You don't have to write a letter. Just write a little card and say, Brother Osteen, I prayed that prayer, and I gave my heart to Jesus. If we don't see you down here, we'll see you on the shores of heaven. Thank you.